Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, we are continuing with this beautiful elegant stocking and we're going to start with Santa's head. And uh, if you're new here, uh, this is the second of possibly three video tutorials. <laughs> I will link the first one in here somewhere. Um, so I'm just uh, appliquing this first piece on. And um, I'm using one strand because I usually use one strand for applique because that's what it says to do in the kit so that's what I'm doing here and um, I, don't, I don't think we're stuffing it I have to look at the instructions to see if we're stuffing it sorry my I'm trying to stay in the frame while doing this <laughs> at the same time so I'm just going along the dotted lines and I'm making sure that the dotted lines on the cream piece match up with the ones on the white. So that's what I'm doing here. And then um, I'm gonna add Santa's uh, other piece for his cloak. And then his face. So this is the back of the cloak. And then we're gonna put his, like the it's kind of a layered effect, so it's not quite stuffed. So we're just kind of layering these pieces on top. And when I layer stuff, um, I only go through to the next layer below. I don't go through every single layer below. And that way you, uh, you'll have less thread breakage, by the way, if you do that. Plus, it'll go by so much quicker. And uh, you won't lose that 3D effect. So I'm going to finish the rest of this off camera and then we're going to start on Santa's face. And I sped this part up because it took me forever. <laughs> but I wanted to show you um, how I did his face. So I'm just trying to figure out the best position here. And um, I'm just doing his nose. And for the face, it really takes a lot of patience because literally the face kind of makes or breaks the character because you want to make sure that you are that your lines are thin especially when you're doing like the nose and the and the and the outlines of the eyes and the outlines of the mouth you want these lines to be as thin as you can and make sure you go really slow so you see I'm going really slow Although, I'm, I sped this up because I went really slow. But um, I'm using kind of a peach color right here to do the outline of the nose. There's the nose. And uh, the way you do the face really makes, you know, the, the person kind of look like an actual person. I've seen other stockings... I have pe the people have finished that their faces just a look a little off but it just takes a lot of practice and uh, it's taken me a long time to actually be comfortable filming doing the face because um, I would just get so <laughs> paranoid about making sure that the face looks perfect so this is a rare occurrence me showing you this <laughs> all right so there's the nose and we're gonna skip ahead and do it's like a dark, like a dark tan, a dark, dark brown color. So there is no black. So we're doing um, where, where the eye is usually black, we're actually going to do like a dark brown instead. So I'm sorry again, I uh, was not paying attention and I forgot where my camera was laying. So I am doing a, um, a satin stitch here, which I'll show you in a moment. So there's one I done, I'm gonna do the other one. Okay, so those are the satin stitches. So I like to go, I like to work inside out. So if I'm working on eyes, I work on the, in the middle first and then I work my way out and uh, 
I'm doing the outline around the eye. So we did dark brown for the iris, and then white, and then a dark brown going around each eye. And this will really make the eyes pop out when you do it this way. But this is an outline stitch that I'm showing you. Because we're literally outlining the eye. <laughs> you see how how much like goes into making the face? It's it's amazing how many stitches that you do just to make the face. But if you get it just right, then it looks almost like a doll, like a, like a life doll. Almost alive. Okay, so as you can see, I have not done the eyebrows yet because we needed to attach the face first. This is what it says in the instructions. It says to attach the face, uh, applique, um, after you embroider, so embroider, and then stuff and applique it, and then you add the um, eyebrows. So that's what I'm doing right now, and those are also a satin stitch. This is how I decided to do them. They're not perfect, but they'll get the job done. I mean, you know, Santa's gonna have some bushy eyebrows. <laughs> As long as the eyes look fine, which I think they do, so I'm not really too picky about the eyebrows. But I'm just showing you how I did them. I'm trying to fill in the gaps here. And I know it's upside down, but it was just easier for me to maneuver trying to get these eyebrows in. And you'll get enough stitches in there. See, now it looks fine. And now, um, once we have the eyebrows done, um, I put like the trim of the cloak over that. As you can see, the white trim. And now we're gonna add bits of his sleeve here. So we've got the outside sleeve and then the inner sleeve. And these are just applique on and there's no beading or embroidery. So I'm just basically placing pieces and stitching them. Okay, so now we are, you can see in the background I have a hand up there. So I'm just uh, putting the hands together. And uh, when we're stuffing small pieces, I like to just sandwich it and then stuff it as I go just makes it easier for, for me to do that. If you've ever made this kit, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know how you love how you, how you uh, liked the kit, if you liked the kit, um, what your experiences were. I love hearing your stories and um, knowing what projects you're working on. Okay, so now that we've got his fingers, this is going to hold a staff later, so I'm just going to pin it and then um, applique just the back part and leave his hand kind of open for when we put the staff in later. I seriously think some of these designs are so clever that the way that they uh, mimic real life, you know? So it looks like he's actually holding holding something. And this, this happens sometimes where I'm just like, oh, try and do a little knot in here. <laughs> it's all good, it worked out. Okay, now his hand is done. Now it's ready to hold something. All right, so here is the sleeve. And we are doing some more metallic thread. Lots and lots of metallic thread. And I really love 
this little design on his um, his robe. So we're just doing a simple outline stitch, kind of a scallopy thing going on. And um, at the end of each scallop, I like to go down and then come back up again. Just so it's not like, it's a sharper point rather than like a, like a curved point. And then I do these along the way. I figured it's easier to do it this way than to go back and do those. So basically I'm taking turns. So I'll applicate or I'll <clears throat> do the outline stitch and then jump up and do the little, um, the little, I don't know what they're called. It's like a, like a daisy loop or something. If you know, I should probably look it up. If you know what that stitch is called, let me know <laughs> down in the comments. And then you put little pearls on them and it has this cute little like quilted effect. Oh, I love it. We're going to do the exact same thing with his other hand and his other sleeve. And the sleeve is stuffed on top. Okay, so now that I have the other arm done, it's basically the same. He'll be holding things. And uh, now we're gonna add the white trim to the outside here. So it really gives it a nice, like, it feel, like if you look at it, it looks like a big poofy quilted robe so the um the trim on the sleeves uh there are two pieces to it and it is very 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 lightly stuffed here so <clears throat> i'm just gonna go and um, show you how i applique this so we are just going along the um the bottom to the side to the top and we are keeping the beaded side open just to have the illusion that his sleeve is open there so don't applique the side where the beads are if that makes sense so i'm just going and appliquing this part trying not to get my st um, my thread stuck too much and trying to keep along the dotted line as much as i can and if, you, if for some reason I miss a dotted line, I just go back and rub off the stamp. It comes off fairly easy. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to stop by his hand. Right around there. And leave that open. Now it looks like his sleeve is just hanging open. Like Father Christmas. Perfect. How cute is that? And you're gonna do that for both sides. I added his little feet down here, his little uh, shoes. And we're gonna put this middle piece in. Okay, anybody else think the middle piece looks like like a panel for a wedding dress? <laughs> when I looked at this, I'm like, this looks like the panel of a wedding dress. <laughs> but it's not, it's a robe. So I'm just, um, I am showing you How to do this part here so we're kind of doing like a like a chain stitch right here with the metallic thread like I said in the first video lots of metallic thread in this kit so if you notice make sure okay make sure that you're paying attention to the instructions because um, you may have different stitches on different lines so if you notice the bottom one has just a regular um, outline stitch but this particular one has the chain stitch so make sure that you're always referencing to your chart and um, your instructions. All right. Oh, I love this robe. It is so cool. Okay, so the same design on the sleeve we're gonna put on the robe. And I just kind of placed it here and we're actually going to add those later on. Okay, so I love this part because Okay, once you put the design on and then you applique it, then you go back and then you add this part. And it has to be stuffed in order to have this effect because what we're trying to do is we're trying to have this quilted look to it. So um, you'll see what I mean as I go along. So I'm just doing a regular um, outline stitch here. And if you've stuffed enough, it should look like 
um, like a quilted, it had that quilted effect to it. So I'll, I'll show you as I go. <clears throat> Part of me thinks that I it's hard to overstuff this because the pieces are so large, but you can overstuff. So try not to overstuff, just stuff enough to have this cool quilted effect. And you can kind of see how it's, it's kind of, do you see what I mean? Like, oh, I love that. It's so cool. So I try to go all the way to the back. Some of my stitches didn't make it all the way to the back, but that's okay because the, the stitch itself pulls at the felt. So there's the L section right there. And, I added these these uh, little bits and this trim. And the trim goes along this side here. If that bugs you, you can easily rub that off. But I just wanted to show you where the line was. And um, the trim is stuffed, as you can see. It was very tricky to stuff, by the way. I had to do it off camera <laughs> because of the way that, like, the, sh the shape. It's like a giant seven, you know? So here's um, the other side, and I'll kind of show you my process here. So the uh, trim has two sides, and we are I'm just like sewing in like about an inch or so, and then stuffing it, sewing and then stuffing. So it's just like this, you know, inch by inch, little by little, and it just it's so much easier to stuff a piece like this because it's because these are very narrow, so. Make sure you're either using a pencil or um, I like to use a chopstick, but I'm just showing you how to just stuff it. So I just grab my chopstick and I just stuff it a little bit at a time. And I want it to have that same poofiness as the other side. So this is kind of my process on how to do this. Hopefully that's helpful for you. And then um, once you have that little piece in there, oh, I love the quiltedness of it because it kind of matches the background a little. So cute. That is for his robe tie. Okay, so if you don't know how to do any type of cording, I have a different video about cording that I will link in the description box as well as up in the cards above. Make sure you check that out so you know how to make cording. It's actually a lot easier than you think. But this is where you place it. So I took my needle and I went around him literally and then came back. And then I'm gonna knot both ends here. And I made the cording long on purpose because I wanted to get it exactly where I, where, where I need it to land. So I'm gonna tie it like you would a shoe, right? So I'm gonna tie it and then um, I'm actually gonna, um, I'm gonna tack it down. You can, you could probably leave it as is, but I felt better um, using a tack down stitch right here. So you tie it and then you tack it down. That way it doesn't go anywhere. So that's what I'm showing you here. It's super easy. And then just do a little double knot in the back. And now you can do the rest of the bow tie. So we're gonna tie it. And I'm using the picture as a reference to kind of give the length. And I just did like a square knot. Yeah. Not the fancy, but I'm just seeing where it lands. So it kind of lands right around here-ish. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm kind of, um, I'm putting knots where I think that they should be cut. So if you're if you need it to be shorter, knot it first <laughs> and then cut it. Otherwise, your beautiful cording will be unraveled, and we don't want that happening. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you uh, want to see more, subscribe to my channel for more awesome tutorials. And I'm just loving this stocking so far; it is gorgeous, and I can't wait to finish it. So make sure you tune in tune in next week for the final tutorial, and. Um, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.